I want to read you an article. This is from The Independent by Martin Hickman in, in uh, 2009. And I want to know if, what you think of this. It says, study claims meat creates half of all greenhouse gases. Livestock causes far more climate change than first thought, says a new report. Climate change emissions from meat production are far higher than currently estimated, according to a controversial new study that will fuel debate on whether people should eat fewer animal products to help the environment. In a paper published by a respected U.S. think tank, the World Watch Institute, two World Bank environmental advisors claim that instead of 18% of global emissions being caused by meat, the true figure is 51%. They claim that United Nations figures have severely underestimated the greenhouse gases caused by tens of billions of cattle, sheep, pig, poultry, and other animals in three main areas, methane, land use, and respiration. Their findings, which are likely to prompt fierce debates among academics, come amid increasing, come, come amid increasing from climate change experts' calls for people to eat less meat. In the 19-page report, Robert Goodland, a former lead environmental advisor to the World Bank, and Jeff Anhang, a current advisor, suggested that domesticated animals cause 32 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent to more than the combined impact of, the, of in, industry and energy. The accepted figure is 18% taken from landmark UN report in 2006. Livestock's long shadow, if this argument, if this argument is right, Right, Goodlin and Ahang, it implies that replacing livestock products with better alternatives would be the best strategy for reversing climate change. Does anyone want to comment on that? Well, I can sort of support that statement and I can give you some data. Um, one of the really useful, interesting things that came out in the IPCC's uh, fifth assessment in 2014 was they did something that they'd never done before. They worked out the temperature increase effect of sources of emissions. Before, they'd just taken emissions and they said it had this particular radiative forcing. And they worked it out over a 20-year period. And um, it was very revealing because if you put their agriculture and what they called ad animal husbandry, which I would call killing animals and eating them, if you, if you put those together, right, the temperature effect over this period was more than all industry. That's huge. It was actually more than half of uh, all energy production. So um, it's a massive amount of uh, global warming and climate disruption. It's massive, right? And we can't get restore our energy balance, as Dr. Hansen has been telling us for years, unless we deal with all of the sources of the greenhouse gas emissions, right? So we have to make a complete switch off all fossil fuels onto clean renewable energy, but we have to um, eat differently as well. Indeed, we have not focused on our agricultural practices. Actually, when we think of reducing emissions, we have been focusing, or the media has been focusing mostly on electricity generation, on solar and wind technology. But just like it was just said, we need to focus on everything that is causing greenhouse gas emissions, and that includes agriculture. In some sense, it's not about which one creates the most. It's about reducing all of them to zero. We need to stabilize the climate and we need to get our climate we need to get our to get our climate in balance and that means getting emissions to zero and reforestation as well and and other things that can can um, help stabilize this. So we need to think of the electricity, we need to think of heating and cooling, of transportation, of our industrial uses, and our agriculture as well. We have to look at all of it. Uh, when, I, when Dave and I wrote our book, we focused on the, the energy infrastructure because that's what we had worked at, but that doesn't mean that the agricultural infrastructure isn't equally important. And, and books on that need to be read as all, so read as written as well, so that we can tackle all of the different sectors that are producing this. 
We also have to remember that the issues go beyond greenhouse gases. For example, if you want to raise cattle, what do you have to do? You have to raise feed corn. What do you do when you do that? Massive amounts of nitrogen fertilizer. If most of that ends up in the waterways, dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico. So in other words, it goes beyond just the issue of climate change per se. If I could add to that, I would, um, a number of years back, when trying to tackle the question of how many people can the Earth support, we ran some very simple calculations and looked at current global food production. And you, can, you know that if you're eating high on the food chain, eating a lot of milk, um, meat, eggs, products from livestock, you're consuming a lot more grain, grain indirectly that's fed to animals, grain and soybeans. Um, so if all of the world were to eat as much meat and therefore as much grain as Americans eat, the world could sustain about two billion people. Well, whoops, you know, that, that ship has sailed. We're at seven and a half billion people. So, what about the other end of the spectrum? What if we all ate like people in India where vegetarian diets are, are much more common though becoming less so? Well, at that level of world food production, we could sustain about 10 billion people at that level of consumption. But that might not be comfortable for many people around the world and there are parts of the world where it does make sense to eat livestock and livestock can be produced in various ways. So what if we tried somewhere in the middle, maybe the typical Mediterranean diet, where mostly plant-based, but you add in some meat here or there. Well, current Mediterranean diet could sustain about six billion people. So we need to go, all of us, a little bit below that. Maybe we could eat a little bit more livestock products than Indians, but maybe not quite as much as the Italians and certainly not as much as the Americans. Um, but if you want a, a good news part of the story, um, the United States is past peak meat. Meat consumption is actually going down in this country, um, which is, is surprising to many people. It has been for the last handful of years. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, meat is expensive, meat, especially during the recession, meat consumption went down, but it's continuing. So um, while eating lower on the food chain won't solve the climate crisis by itself. It is a way for people to get involved and people to make, make a change in habits and we can find perhaps we can meet somewhere in, in the middle and help the, help the climate and help uh, restore damaged ecosystems as well. Can I give some statistics about internet consumption? So the entire internet traffic from year 2000, that's 365 days of internet traffic, is equal to one hour of internet traffic from the year 2015. The volume of internet traffic, of internet data, doubles every two years. According to a 2016 study from the semiconductor industry, by 2040, we will not have enough electricity to power computers. And whenever I say the word electricity, just think of greenhouse gas emissions. Smartphones CO2 emissions will grow from 4% of total global emissions in 2010 to 11% by next year, 2020. This translates to a jump from 17 to 125 megatons of CO2 equivalent per year. That's a 730% growth. We are not looking at this. Um, I could give more, but we need to include our internet consumption in our lifestyle uh, question. 